This is a Thermomix, and it's supposed to be the best new fandangle mixer cooker. It's been around for a while now, and this is the first or second version of it that has a screen. The first or second version that wasn't known to catch fire, and apparently it's meant to be really good. Today, we're cooking lasagna. This recipe, right here, which I'll be roughly following, has been adapted to work with a Thermomix. So when you're making your bechamel sauce, it simply says, place milk, butter, flour, salt and ground and nutmeg into a mixing bowl, cook 12 minutes, 100 degrees, speed three. How can you go wrong with that? Or is it just taking the fun out of cooking? Let's find out. And let's power this on. Yeah, it helps if you turn the power point on. This is called the basic cookbook, uh, and it comes when you get the Thermomix, so that's what I'm going to be using as my rough guide today. This book here reckons you can saute stuff in that. Place parmesan cheese into mixing bowl and grate for 15 seconds on speed 10, and then transfer, transfer into a bowl and set aside. And then you have to clean and dry the mixing bowl, which sounds like a lot painful. Yeah, a painful exercise for this type of cooking because you'd have to do it one, two, three, three times. So I'm just going to grate the cheese normally. To uh, grate parmesan cheese, you just simply want to get your block of parmesan cheese, get yourself a grater. Because the problem I have at the moment is defrosted on the outside but not necessarily the inside. So that's the rough ball I'm left with. To make the bolognese sauce, you're going to need mixed veggies and mints, white wine, crushed tomatoes, and salt and pepper. Right, let's start putting things together. Now notice everything is measured in grams in this cookbook, which is roughly the same as meals, but it's because in this fancy device, it's got built-in scales, so that's what I'm putting in. Oops, that's 50. Let's just tear and see what happens. Five ninety. Eight hundred and fifty-five grams, that will do. We're gonna break up any big bits. Ah, oh, yeah. You don't ever want to do that while the scales are on. It's speed one. So do, put that lid on like that. Cup. This is actually a measuring cup as well. Um, that's 100 mils. 20 minutes. Use this knob here. 24 minutes. 100 degrees. Reverse, enable, and right. That is our speed. I've got 20 minutes to kill now to uh, do whatever I want. That will suit my life. Probably sit down and edit the cooking video from earlier. Wait, stop. That's only got to be 8 minutes. I just reread the recipe. Now how many how much time it was 18 minutes if I just do I just read the recipe and it says um, eight minutes 120 degrees speed one Ooh. I need a hundred mils of white wine. Bit of a simile on 
Semillon Sauvignon Blanc. Semillon Sauvignon Blanc. So we can use our measuring cup here. Look at that. You do have a lot of time to kill when cooking with Thermomix. You need five minutes. How do you put it on Veroma? Mother? What's Veroma? All the way. Temperature. Ah, right. That's Veroma. Um, five minutes. Speed one. Keep, keep an eye on it when you use Veroma. <laughs> It does get quite steamy when it's on Veroma because it's very, very hot. It's like, a, it's like a volcano happening in there. You can always turn it down on Veroma, of course. How hot is Veroma? No one knows how hot Veroma is. Not even the people who made it. Add crushed tomatoes. Diced, crushed. Apparently the same thing. Bit of pepper. Um, and cook. Now this is where I do 20 minutes. So 20 minutes. 100. Cooks. I might let you do that. So your lid's on. Whilst this machine does the cooking for me, I would like to tell you what I think about it. It's a great tool, don't get me wrong, it does amazing things, like cook mince and saute vegetables and stuff. Problem is, if you're going to follow those recipes, you end up doing everything in that you have to wash the bowl so many times, you lose the skill, because if you have to dice an onion, it just says chuck the, uh, like cut the onion in half, chuck it in there and it will do the rest of it for you. You lose those skills, you wouldn't have to chop the vegetables up yourself, you wouldn't have to, you know, you don't have to stand there f for hours whilst you cook the mince and whatnot. Porridge and custard, this is good for making, but things, you're just not as involved, because Normally I'd be standing there cooking the mince myself at the frying pan, but now I'm just standing here waiting for it to do it for me. It's actually done. That's turned mince into like a puree. Transfer it into a bowl and set aside. So to clean the mix, I'm going to use a feature called the pre-clean. What you want to do is put some water in there. Clean. No. And it just just does it. To make your bechamel sauce, you will need milk, a whole litre of it, your plain flour, nutmeg. It's gonna need softened but not melted butter, but it's actually melted in this case, but that's fine. You're also going to need salt. About that much. Nutmeg, which means about that much. 
See, measuring is really easy on this because it just tells you in grams. You just press the scales and you can tear it and it'll... It'll do the rest of it for you. It's really quite wonderful. Might as well wait for that to cook. This is a casserole, casserole dish we're using. A very high quality one from uh, Anko. So it does say lightly grease it, so I'm going to lightly grease it. Cover the base of the casserole dish with a thin layer of our sauce. How do we not have a wooden spoon? Really, we always had a wooden spoon. We did have a wooden spoon. What happened to the wooden spoon? And then you want to place a layer of pasta chips over that. So I've got the Sam Remo ones here. Cover with another layer of bolognese sauce. Okay. That will do. Now you have to get your parmesan is and then cover that with bechamel sauce. So I'm going to put another layer of pasta sheets on and then a layer of bechamel sauce, which I, or do I want, or do I want to put bechamel sauce, pasta sheet, bechamel sauce, or do I want to put pasta sheets, bechamel sauce, pasta sheets, bechamel, I'll just wait. It's only going to be another three minutes. Right, that bechamel's done, so we can do a nice full layer of it here. Right, look at that. We're going to go past sheet, past sheet, past sheet. So there's the, your lasagna. Well, it looks to be alright, but I'll let you know how it tastes once it's cooked and I finish work. The end result was the machine done very well, except it was a bit flat because I didn't add any extra veggies in because I thought the mince already had them.